I, I decided to look at this one first. Uh, this is the one which says like prove that the altitudes of, of any triangle are concurrent, so they meet in one single point. We, at some stage before, we look at a similar problem with the medians. Uh, nothing stops me from looking now, because now we have more information. Nothing stops me from looking now at the problem with the, with the altitudes. And the solution, actually, there are two solutions. I mean, there are two which, I, which I'm aware of, which involves vectors. The one which I've shown today is very easy, nice, and small, and beautiful. So the question actually here, the, on, the, on page 6, it says, you're given position vectors, A, B, C, for the vertices of your triangle. Uh, OK, so I'll, I'll explain what the P is in a sec. So you, you're given the vertices of the triangle, A. Where's my B? B and C. Uh, you're given vectors, little a, little b, and little c, which are the position vectors associated with these points. P here, it's my own extra, uh, well, I introduced this myself. I mean, like, a, it, it, it's, it's a position vector for the point O. So I put here, actually, on this, on this, on this diagram, I also uh, picture two altitudes, not three of them, but two altitudes, a, a1 and bb1. And I named the point of intersection. It will be point O. And this P vector, which you see here, that's the position vector for this intersection point O. So it actually it says here. A, B, C, and P, position vectors for A, B, C, and O. This time capital. The, 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 the solution itself is very nice and beautiful. Uh, uh, so what you do is just this. You just first you look at this condition. So we know that this is A, A1 is the altitude. So one of the conditions you have in relation to AA1 is it, it is perpendicular to BC. And you just now restate this perpendicular condition in terms of the vectors. Look, look I'm going to do that. I'm saying that the vector P take A, P take A, it's the vector, this vector, AO vector. No, the other way around, OA, because this is the end point, this is the initial point, times dot product, in fact, dot product with the B take C, so it's a vector CB, final point, initial point, this is zero. This is the perpendicular condition for the AA1, BB, uh, and BC sides of your oval segments. Now, similarly, if you look at this perpendicular condition, BB1 perpendicular to the AC, look how, how I'm going to encode this perpendicular condition in terms of the vectors. BB1 vector, well, it's not BB1 vector, of course, it's like a a little bit shorter than that, but still it keeps the direction, and that's all we need. I mean, this PB, it's the vector BO, which is shorter than BB1, but still it's the same, the same, the same, you can say the same about the shorter vector to it. It is perpendicular to AC. And that's the bracket which represents AC vector, and that's equal to zero. So you have these two conditions. All you have to do now, it's quite miraculously, some, some via some algebraic manipulations, we will see now that actually the third Altitude will go from the same point. Look at this. Uh, so first you expand this the way you expand with no, like you, the way you do the expansion with numbers. We last time we discussed we did it a few times and we discovered actually with the with the dot product we can proceed as if we, we with numbers. So if I expand this, look at what the expansion will be. P A. Uh, that's supposed to be P A. Well, it's, it's a typo. I'll fix it in a sec. Uh, uh, actually, I'm, actually, my fault. Actually, I, I, actually, this is the expansion. Now I see what happened. This is the expansion for the second for the second identity. Now, not, nothing wrong with that. I just opened it beforehand. So, P A product is this this P with this A. Negative P dot product with C. It's this P with this C. Negative uh, B di uh, B dot A. It's this combination. And final combination is B dot C. The same expansion goes for the first line, like this. If I expand this, it again will be four different combinations, each by each, but dot product. You look at this too, and then all we have to do, when I did this expansion, when I did this expansion, when I did this expansion, all I have to do to see the result I need is just to subtract one identity from the other identity. If I do the subtraction, uh, some, some terms will disappear. For instance, this negative p dot c will vanish this negative p dot c 
uh, sum will disappear here, yes, and this negative B, A dot B will vanish in this negative B dot A. Remember, the dot product is a commutative thing, so it doesn't matter in which, in which way we multiply them. So if I take the difference of these two, what I will end up with is a difference of these two dot products. Here it is. And the difference of these two dot products. Here it is. Right hand side, just zero. Now, what I will do now, I will do like the opposite trans transformation. So, I mean, like a, when I say transformation, I mean here from these two identities down to these two identities, we did the expansion. Now I do, from here, I do the opposite transformation. I will factorize, try to make brackets again. And that's relatively easy because look at this. These first two terms, if you group them together, they have a common factor, vector P. So if I take this P as a common factor out, it will be like this. These two, they have, a, they have a common factor C. And I'll take not C, but negative C, just for convenience. You will see in a second why negative C is more convenient, the more convenient choice. B take A, that's zero. Now, these two together, they again have a common factor, this big bracket, that's a common factor, which can be factored out again. If I factor out this common factor, I will have something like this. And now all we have to do, we have to interpret this last identity we come up with. We have to interpret this identity in terms of my triangle. What does it say? It say P takes C, that's the vector. Remember, P was the position for O, C is the position for C. So it's a vector which goes like this, it is perpendicular to the B take A, that's this vector. That's exactly what we're heading to. I mean, like, if I now, I'm not going to construct the altitude now. If I just draw a line through, uh, from, from C through A and all the way to the B A, this line necessarily will be perpendicular to B. So this line, in fact, will be the altitude. That's what this, what this identity says to us. If you look, if you look at, the, at the handwritten solutions, there is another solution there. And actually, it's marked the one shown in classes because last year when I was doing this problem, I showed the other solution, and that's the one which is like in the in the in the handwritten solutions. It's marked with the with the heading, the one shown in class. That solution it seems longer than this one, and this one also there. You have two solutions in your handwritten printout. Uh, the, that solution, the other one which I showed last year in the class, it's longer than this one, but it's not because it, it's worse than this one. It's longer because. In that solution, we went further than in here. Not only we proved that the altitudes are concurrent, we also there established the proportions in which this point O, in, in which this point O splits each of the altitudes. In fact, that solution follows the lines of, of thinking, sorry, follow the line of thinking we used for the median, median case. When we proved that the median are concurrent. If you remember, on that occasion, we found these proportions, they were very nice. There was like a one to two all the time. And that helped us to establish that the medians intersect in the common point. Well, with the, with the second solution for the altitude question, the same line of thinking is used. I mean, we, 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 I found there the proportions, or we found with the, with the other group last year. Uh, we found the proportions, and we saw that the proportions ensures this concurrency. But the, so if you're interested in that, you can look at that solution too. If you want. Any questions? Yes? What is the, um, which kind of seven you said? Uh -huh. That's the condition we discovered with you last time. Or is that the condition says that if you have two vectors which are perpendicular, this is equivalent, equivalent to saying that the dot product of two vectors zero. That's the kind of conditions you now can use all the time. I mean, like it's a very nice way to test for the perpendicular for, for, for the orthogonality. Rather than doing geometrical tests, you do very nice algebraic tests. And they equivalent. They equivalent products. Yes. From the first set of brackets or the second set of brackets? Again? From, down, from this to down here, we subtracted the second one from the first one. Minus. Yeah, it goes minus. 